Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The impacts of the UAW's historic strike against the big three automakers already being felt. Layoffs have already been announced or warned at two of the three plants that are current targets of that strike. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Pamela Osborne. And I'm Will Jones. Ford sent home about 600 workers at its Michigan plant, and GM says 2,000 workers could soon be laid off at a plant in Missouri. Tonight, we're looking at the impact of this strike after just two days and what could be next. Mara McDonald is live in Wayne tonight, and Mara, tomorrow they're expecting a crowd at Ford's Michigan assembly plant. Well, they sure are. They're calling it Solidarity Sunday, so you're expecting a rally out here, which is one of the main lines here that you see picketers at. Meanwhile, the UAW's chief is expected to make some appearances on the Sunday shows. If Thursday and Friday at Ford's Michigan Assembly were all adrenaline, now it's optimism. As UAW members ease into the picketing rotation and bring reinforcements like Gizmo. Definitely happy to be out here and supporting our UAW family, so it gets no better than this. The UAW sat down with four today and union sources described the talks as reasonably productive. Workers walking the picket line universally tell me they don't think this strike will last long, but if it does, I'm ready. I'm ready. Ford says due to the strike at paint and final assembly at the Michigan assembly plant or map as it's called, it had to send home 600 workers on layoff because there was nothing for them to do. This as Stellantis laid out the details of its offer, which it says the UAW, at least in some respects, misrepresented. It includes a 21% pay hike, boosting temp pay up to 20 bucks an hour and ending tiers at Mopar and having its current progression to top scale to four years instead of eight. All three automakers are offering similar packages, which include up to five weeks of vacation, profit sharing, and no premiums for health care. All deals the UAW has turned down. Back here live, so negotiations continue next week and something to be on the lookout for. Yes, the UAW is striking all three automakers, but it is currently picketing only three plants, one here in Michigan. UAW Chief Sean Fain has made it clear if those negotiations don't go the way he wants them to, you're going to see more plants added to that list. We're live in Wayne tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, much more to come. Thank you, Mara. Many lawmakers have been commenting on the strike tonight. Former President Obama made his thoughts known. In a statement to CNN, Obama said in part, car makers are enjoying robust profits. It's time to do right by those same workers so the industry can emerge more united and competitive than ever. The team at Click on Detroit has extensive coverage of the strike detailing the impact and what could come next. You can also take a look at the past UAW strikes. You can find it all on clickondetroit.com. Cold front will bring rain and cooler weather to Metro Detroit. So tomorrow. that means Lion fans may have to bring the raincoat as well as the umbrellas for the home opener. Ron, what do you think? You know, it's a great idea to do it. And some of us will come across a chance of a sprinkle or two tonight as well. So we do have a rainy Sunday in store for us. You might want to take that poncho umbrella or jacket out with you right now. Looking at 696 in Southfield traffic flowing just fine, not interrupted or impacted by the weather right now. We do have the temperatures out there comfortable 63 in Detroit, 57 in Ann Arbor, 58 in Lapeer, Monroe, 59. So here are those showers getting closer and closer to Metro Detroit. Already starting to see a couple of showers around I-69 and Northward, the Flint area. We're starting to see those showers popping up. If you're in the Swartz Creek area, you're seeing some of those showers getting out west of US-23. Also, those showers a little bit more prominent. And we will have more of this on the way. All this right here has to come through our area in association with that cold front that you just heard about. So right now we have cloudy conditions across the area for the most part. We will continue to see the clouds tonight and for the chance of showers approaching our area. If you want the latest forecast, as well as to track those showers as you go about your activities tomorrow, all you have to do is download the Forewarn weather app. You can get it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. We're gonna have more on when you can expect those showers coming up. One person is dead and two others are in the hospital after a triple shooting on Detroit's west side. Police say it happened at a gas station in the area of Greenfield and Chicago 
All of the victims are men. The man killed was pronounced dead at the scene. The conditions of the other victims is not clear right now. Anyone with information on this shooting is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Police were on Detroit's west side earlier tonight for a crash involving a police cruiser on Detroit's west side. It happened at Linwood and Calvert around 6. You can see the DPD car with its front smashed in and the airbags deployed. Police say the officers were en route to a call when it happened. Who is at fault for the crash is still being investigated. DPD did not comment on how the officers are doing tonight, but did say there were no injuries in the other car. A building explosion rocked Detroit's Eastern Market neighborhood today around noon. No one was in the building when that explosion happened, but you can see some of the extensive damage there. The building across from Eastern Market shed two. That's where this happened, suffered some minor injuries from, or one person, I should say, suffered minor injuries from falling debris. The cause is still being investigated. New tonight, Michigan State University says it has opened an investigation into who leaked Brenda Tracy's identity in the sexual harassment investigation involving MSU football head coach Mel Tucker. And an MSU spokesperson confirmed the new investigation to NBC's Lansing affiliate. Tracy says she wanted to remain anonymous but was forced to go to USA Today when her identity was leaked. We are just learning about this new investigation, so details are limited right now. We will keep you updated as we learn more. The United States is at risk of another damaging government shutdown, potentially as soon as the end of this month. A deal funding on funding must be reached by the 30th. So what is happening on Capitol Hill? On the Senate side, top lawmakers have largely put aside partisan politics and seem close to passing the funding bill with ease. In the House, things couldn't be more different. House Republicans are trying to win support from the far-right Freedom Caucus wing of the party. So they've loaded funding packages with cuts leading to Democratic objections. We'll keep you updated as those talks continue. You. Now, a post-tropical cyclone, Lee continues to churn hurricane strength winds, delivering rainfall to parts of southeastern New England and Canada. According to the National Hurricane Center, Lee, which was a Category 1 hurricane this morning, unleashed up to six inches of rain in northern Maine today. Tonight, more than 200,000 people are without power, stretching from New England to Canada. Right now, we're worried about um, additional power outages, limbs down, especially as folks head out. Lee is now moving through Nova Scotia. Canadian officials warn residents to prepare for more power outages and stock up on food and medication for at least 72 hours. Victory Day is a chance for kids with special needs to get out on the football field, and I don't know who's having more fun, the players or the kids. 